This is the story of the Delta variant, of how it came to the UK, of how it delayed Boris Johnson's COVID plans. I cannot say that we have met all our four tests for proceeding with step four on June the 21st. I think it is sensible to wait just a little longer. Let's go back to the start. In October, a new variant was detected in India. Six months on, in April, India's cases were surging and several mutations of the variant were causing concern. One was called B.1.617.2. This was Delta and it was gaining international attention. The World Health Organization designated it a variant of interest on the 4th of April. On the 9th of April, Boris Johnson's government expanded its red list of countries, the ones facing the strictest travel restrictions. Here's the press release. The Philippines, Pakistan, Kenya and Bangladesh to be added to England's red list, we were told. It went on. The additional restrictions will help to reduce the risk of new variants, such as those first identified in South Africa and Brazil, entering England. The Delta variant wasn't mentioned, nor was India, which begged the question, why? Well, one possible explanation was politics, that Boris Johnson had a trip to India in late April that he didn't want to cancel. Weeks later, the Sunday Times reported it's alleged that Boris Johnson wanted to keep relations with India smooth before key post-Brexit trade talks. The theory goes the trip would have helped. The government's never accepted that, but pressure to cancel was building. One leading public health academic said India being off the red list was frankly insane. And we got more detail on the government's thinking when Health Secretary Matt Hancock said this in May. When we put Pakistan on the red list and indeed Bangladesh, the positivity of those arriving from Pakistan and Bangladesh was three times higher that from India. That's why we took those decisions. But publicly available government data doesn't back that up. These are the COVID infection rates for arrivals in late March and early April. India is above Bangladesh and close to Pakistan. Mr Hancock has also argued that the government didn't have the full picture. We didn't have that data because there is a long lag from the cases, the date on which the case occurs, to the date when the sequencing result comes back. So you have to act on the data that you have. His argument there is about sequencing, which identifies individual variants. But even without that information, the headline data from India needed little interpretation. By mid-April, even after factoring in population size, India was recording far more new cases a day than Bangladesh or Pakistan, though the UK government says that was in part because India was testing more. What the UK definitely knew was that India had outbreaks of what were then called the Kent, South Africa and Brazil variants. And COVID in India was a huge and rapidly escalating crisis. And within days, the government had changed tack. This press release on the 19th of April announced India was being added to the red list from the 23rd. It noted there is a high volume of travel between India and the UK. Certainly, there was a high volume in April. The Sunday Times estimates that 20,000 people arrived in the UK from India in the first three weeks of the month. Again, though, this week, Boris Johnson has defended his government. We put India on the red list, Mr Speaker, on April, on April the 23rd. Uh, and the Delta variant was not uh, so identified until April uh, the 28th. This is all true. But it's also true that the role of variants in the India crisis was known earlier in April and that people in mid-April were urging the Prime Minister to act. And whatever the rights and wrongs of the government's decision here, Boris Johnson was following a pattern. At the start of the pandemic, he locked down England later than many European countries. In the autumn, he locked down later than his scientific advisers suggested. In December, he resisted calls for more restrictions at Christmas, then changed his mind. And again here, he acted later than he might have. The question is, what was the impact of doing that? Well, by mid-May, the opposition was making these accusations. They should have put India on the red list at the same time as Pakistan and as Bangladesh. Since then, we've had this three-week sure. period in which thousands of people have returned from India, and that probably includes hundreds of the new variant COVID cases. But does this add up? Can April's decisions be connected with what's happening now? 
Well, Delta does account for more than 90% of new cases in England. This is one former government advisor. We are in the grip of the early stages of a third wave of the virus, and it is this Delta variant. We've got 7,000 cases on average a day at the moment, and a doubling time, which is somewhere around a week. And then this is a current UK government advisor on whether the red list decision mattered. This India Delta variant is now um, quite common around the globe, so it would have ended up in the United Kingdom at some point, but, ha but perhaps it would have been would have been delayed uh, and it's really the competition between the between the virus and the vaccine so had the variant arrived in the country when we'd had more people vaccinated then it may well not have grown in the same way that it has in other words to some extent timing did matter but it's not the whole story look at these dates the uae brought in extra restrictions on travel from india on the 22nd of april france was the 24th the us the 4th of may and remember, the UK was the 23rd of April. It wasn't out of sync with these countries. More broadly, the WHO says Delta is in over 60 countries. So why is the UK particularly affected? Well, this is helpful from Dr. Jeffrey Barrett, a leading geneticist. He's quoted in The Independent and says, if you get one introduction, even of a transmissible variant, there's a decent chance it fizzles out and doesn't create a big outbreak. If you get 100, 500 or 1,000 introductions, it's very hard to avoid that some of them will go on to seed big outbreaks, all of which feeds into the ongoing arguments over the timing of the red list decision. Arguments that have an urgency because Delta is becoming more and more of an issue. And the message from scientists is it won't be the only one. There's no question that when we have this conversation in six months time, we'll be talking about different variants. And how governments manage variants will have a huge bearing on how much COVID disrupts our lives. We've seen that with Delta. It would have reached the UK anyway, but decisions in April do help to explain why England's COVID restrictions will not be eased on June the 21st.